Hello everyone and welcome back to Football a la Turca episode 18. I hope you all listened to our interview last week with Gabriele Marcotti. Uh, it was our first interview and we'll be having a couple more coming up for you soon. Uh, lining up an interview right now with, uh, with uh, Samantha Johnson. I was going to say Samuel L. Jackson for a minute there. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that would be very... Uh, Weird for a Turkish football podcast. And of course, uh, with uh, John Okar, we're uh, sitting down with John soon too to talk a little bit about football finances. But I am today joined once again by Burak Sezgin, Uzer Dinger, and the returning Umut Naderi. So, guys, thanks for joining me. Pleasure, once again. Pleasure. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> and uh, well, today, before we get into the fun stuff, we before we get into. Um, uh, well, just a little bit of chit chat, really, between uh, some friends. We're trying out a little bit of a, a less uh, structured format, so to speak. We're just going to talk about transfer rumors, uh, things we think are likely, not likely, stuff like that. But before we get into that, we're going to briefly talk about the Turkish international break. Of course, last week, due to our interview with Gabriele Marcotti, we were unable to do an uh, an episode on the Turkish national team's results in the European qualifiers. So I'm just quickly going to run down these results here. Turkey beat France 2-0. In Konya, great result for Turkey. Unfortunately, it was followed up by a defeat in Reykjavik, one to two against Iceland. Um, with that, Turkey are top of the group with nine points, but so are France with nine points, and so are Iceland now with nine points. So all three of the favorites to qualify have nine points at the moment. Of course, the top two will qualify, and then there's then it comes down to the best third of. Uh, the groups. I'm not 100 percent sure on how that works out. We'll we'll check out a little bit close. Cl- the closer we get to the end of the qualifying campaign, we'll get a little bit more information on that if it's needed. Um, although I don't know about you guys, but I still, despite that loss to Iceland, I still feel pretty good about our chances. Um, let's let's start with uh, with Umut. What do you think about our defeat in Iceland and? What 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 feeling were you going into that game coming off of that astounding astounding win uh, against France? Well, after the win from the France, uh, I was really uh, uh, not feeling very really good about the Iceland game because we were uh, really wait expecting uh, very much from the team. Uh, but uh, two days apart, uh, and our players are like tired uh, and. Uh, our squad uh, went into a rotation and we had to use uh, players like Ozan and uh, not having Mahmoud Tekdemir in the midfield uh, caused us a lot of problems. Uh, also, uh, lack of quality shown by Hakan Chalhanoğlu, I believe, uh, yeah. is the thing uh, we lacked uh, in the Iceland game. But Iceland as a team uh, is a really quality team, uh, not as a talent, but mm-hmm. uh, being a team uh, kept them uh, uh, really successful down the years. Uh, and they showed this similar uh, kind of thing against us. And uh, that uh, resulted the uh, defeat uh, yeah. against Turkey. But Turkey didn't get blown away this time. Last time, I believe, we, we went there, we got blown away 3-0. Um, Uzer, what, what what were your thoughts on, in particular, the Iceland result? Were you surprised at all? Did you do you think that Turkey might have been too arrogant going into that match? Yeah, I think arrogance is is definitely a key factor there. There was also the whole Brushgate scandal that didn't really help the concentration of the Turkish players. I think they saw it as a kind of issue of pride and relied too much on that uh, to 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 spur them on and didn't think too much about the football, which was a shame. Um, Umut mentioned about Hakan Chalhanoğlu, which I agree with. I think in the past, he's been criticised for being ineffective. Whereas in that game, he was actually harmful to the rest of the team. He gave so many improper passes. He gave away possession a lot of the time. Uh, and I was disappointed that Şenol Ganesh didn't take him off. Um, I was also disappointed with Şenol's team selection. Um, we were unlucky to not have uh, Cengiz and of course, through injury again. But Chanel should have been a lot more attacking than he was because towards the end of the second half, Turkey actually turned on the charm and played some pretty good football, but just couldn't convert it into enough goals to get the point. Yeah, I, I do agree. I think uh, as soon as Yusuf Yazici came on at half time, we immediately felt uh, a change. 
uh, the, the pressure from, from, from Iceland eased up. They weren't able to put us under the same pressure they were in during the first 30-35 minutes. Uh, Burak, what did you think of Shinal Gunish's team selection? Well, I think against the, the French, it was magnifique, as the French would say. I think at the end of the, the France game, when Hassan Ali Calderon walks into the changing room, he empties out his, he empties out his pockets. He's got a couple of bananas, uh, a headband, and a Kylian Mbappe just like falls out onto the dressing room floor. <laughs> saying, like, there you go. France had no shots on target in, in that game as well, which is the first time, I think, in a decade or Didier Deschamps mentioned. So I thought the team selection in that game, everyone stepped up and, and performed. Uh, Tech Demir, uh, Irfan Jan in particular, uh, Undad Karnai Han, uh, Melich Demiral went all, he went, he went Conor McGregor on Olivier Giroud, nearly knocked him out with a flying knee, which was <laughs> glorious. It's even more glorious in slow motion to watch him like knock that, that pretty boy down. Um, and as, as I said, then we had um, Brushgate and being in Iceland and being Turks, uh, they scoured the internet like day and night and eventually found the guy made him wear a turkey shirt and made him apologize um no turned doubt out to be a belgian apologize. guy not a nice turned out to be a belgian i heard he's at least down the road from you Khan. is that is that right no 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 no, no. did you lend him the jersey Khan? no frenchies over here <laughs> um, and I, then... actually i don't i don't have many turkey jerseys i have to be honest i have uh i have a couple like three or four maybe but i, I really don't have a lot of turkey jerseys I need to get get a few more into the collection, my friend. Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, I I had the chance to buy Ilhan's shirt from the World Cup uh, in two thousand and two, and I passed on it for some reason. Um, so the actual was, shirt he wore off his back. Yeah, one of the shirts. I'm not sure which game, but it was a match worn shirt. And I passed up on buying it uh, like a couple of years ago. Really stupid. Um, yeah, but I actually do own an Ilhan shirt from uh, the, the the qualifying campaign against Latvia, so that's less uh, good memories. But yeah. oh god, I remember that. That was the playoff where we lost. Yeah, Verbakovskis. Absolute absolute prick. He was. I um, can't believe still still can't believe we lost that playoff game to uh, bloody Latvia. Yeah. Um, but we digress. And um, I mean, against Iceland, I mean. The Icelandic team, they're just they're just built like like brick shit houses, aren't they? It's like a team of Dolph Longrens from Rocky Four. Um <laughs> just coming at you. They're all like six foot four, blonde, broad shoulders, strong. And then at one point you had the image of Abdul Qadir Amur who'd come on. Mm-hmm. Oh uh, you know, and just him against like one of their centre backs. It, it was just funny. Um you, you know, he's just towering over yeah. him. I, I see uh, Abdul Qadir Amir as looking a bit like a real life Super Mario. You know, he's got that kind, of, <laughs> that kind of vibe, and I see him kind of jumping around and avoiding punches and things. Yeah, but he it does was it almost really like well, he, huh? yeah, yeah, he does a pretty good job. And and in the game in the game against Iceland, he was kind of like getting battered and bruised all over from these towering Donkey Kong style Iceland players. Yeah, but he's not afraid of them. That's uh, no, he's not. He's not. He's, he's, not. Uh, he's one yeah, of he's very Messi esque in that respect. Like I, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't compare him to Messi in in, in, in most other uh, ways. Maybe you know his dribbling style and all that. But he's he, he he doesn't shy away from duels, from physical duels. I mean, yeah, I remember one point he he went in for an aerial duel with a guy that's like twice his size and he actually got a fall called on him yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was just laughing my socks off at that point I, I didn't think the referee was particularly good but um definitely wasn't his fault that we lost uh iceland with with their trademark power play just overwhelmed us and we got the goal through dorokan right before halftime to get one back but couldn't do anything really in in, in the, the second 45 minutes and it's interesting because i i did run a poll after the france game to ask uh, the followers uh, well, my followers, who were um, who was the man of the match for them, and I gave them four selections. But and so it was between Meri Demiral, Khan Ayhan, Burak Yilmaz, and Hassan Ali Kaldrim. Obviously, there were other people who played a great game, like Burak already said, Mahmoud Tegdimir, and uh, I mean, almost the entire team played a great game, um, except for maybe I, I didn't particularly fancy Kenan Karaman in the first half. He he had a good second half in terms of work rate, but I think that's one of those players that does stick out a little bit as a short term of that's just not enough quality there, but um, I digress. So 809 votes, that's the final results. It was 31% Meri Demiral, 
Uh, 18% Khan Ihan, 29% Burak Yilmaz, and 22% Hassan Ali Calderim. So, I mean, it was really close. I think Meri Demiral, for me, that was my choice too. I think he, he had a fantastic game. Uh, I know Umut was, was very high on Burak's performance there. And I kind of want to pick in on that because Burak was really good in that match against France. It was impressive how he kept both Umtiti and, and Varane busy for basically 90-plus minutes on his own, 34 years old, against two guys who are in the prime of their careers, like, what, 24, 25 years old. Um, so he's, like, 10 years their senior, and he kept them busy for 95-plus minutes. But you could really see that, that it took the wind out of his sails, I felt like, because against Iceland, I thought it was absolutely abysmal. Um, it felt like he was playing a match against himself for 90-plus minutes. He was more worried about the referee getting annoyed by, you know... the the physical play by the Iceland players, but he was nowhere in the match. And it's one of those things, I, I do kind of understand why you leave him on, because you don't have many options on the bench in terms of strikers. Uh, and you you are hoping, as a coach, you're hoping for that one moment where he's going to pop up in the box and maybe score. But I, I, I think it was very clear early on that this was not going to be one of those games where Burak was going to get on the score sheet, just simply because he was just... He was playing against himself. It kind of reminded me a little bit of, of Ricardo Quaresma when he has those little fits. Um, and, yeah, I agree with you guys with the team selection against, you know, Iceland. Despite, of course, the injury to Mamo Tegdimer last minute was very unfortunate. The injury to Genghis Unner was very unfortunate. But then to put in Ozan Tufan, who basically hasn't played a proper amount of football in the last two or three years. I mean, he got a couple of games under his belt now with Alanya Spur and did okay, but... That does not make you up to this, you know, not up to this level. I think there w- could have been better choices there. But again, you know, Okai Jokishli being out, Mahmoud being out. In the second half, I did feel that Ozan was a little bit better. But in the first half, I felt like he was just, you know, kind of dead weight. Um, Hassan Ali couldn't repeat his performance. Burak couldn't repeat his performance. Meri and Khan, I think it was a good test for them, this type of match. Really gave them a run for their money. But they had to make up for a lot of... Uh, the lack of coverage from midfield. I, I don't know if you guys would agree with that. So much for my monologue, guys. <laughs> <laughs> also, but I'm another say, drink. <laughs> yeah. Also, I want to say that it has to. It has to be stated that Turks uh, are really uh, uh, go onto things with their feelings, giving mm-hmm. uh, and uh, surrender to their feelings and. Before the game uh, of Iceland, uh, the pressure coming from the public, from the Twitter, from Instagram, yeah. uh, they just build up some hashtags uh, into the mm-hmm. team about like the Icelandic, uh, you know, uh, invasion uh, about. Uh, <laughs> uh, Turks are some... coming for, for, for Iceland. Or what yeah, was yeah, it? yeah. It, it, we're it was gonna like number one trend in the world, and then you get beaten two to one. Yeah, um, yeah. When you. Uh, uh, turn the field into a war zone and uh, Turks uh, already lost that war yeah, because yeah. it just reminds me of that uh, Switzerland game back mm-hmm. in the day uh, in tw- uh, 2005 I think mm-hmm. we failed to qualify for the World Cup uh, it was the same thing uh, we yeah. go there uh, about a war kind of ideology and we lost once again uh, we had just had to be uh, moved with our logic. Yeah, that, that shenanigans doesn't work in, in yeah, uh, inter- that, that at the international level. True. But I, th- I think it's Although, important. Uh, we look at if we look at our next three fixtures, which are then Andorra at home, Moldova away, and then Albania at home. That should be the head F should be nine points for that one. Uh, uh, Andorra yeah. at home, I don't think I'm going to pose much of a challenge. Moldova away could be a little bit tricky and then Albania at home I reckon could be a little bit tricky but if we get all our players back that were missing for the Iceland game and Okai Okushla hopefully he was back to fitness as well and then you know Shino will have a I think he'll have a good selection headache and I think the we're going to understand the importance of that win away in Albania a lot more as the group comes to a conclusion and I, I still think that we can qualify but I think that nothing can be taken for for, for granted um, moving forward. And 
but yeah, I am uh, excited, excited still, still very optimistic about this team, more more so than I have been for uh, a couple of years. Um, even going into Euro 2016, I wasn't massively optimistic with uh, with the state of the team because we we were starting Mehmet Topal at centre back. Yeah, yeah we for, knew we for, knew going into that that was going to be like we're glad to be there, but that's yeah. I was glad to be there. I, I followed the team around <laughs> yeah. the country, around France uh, with my friends, so that was a really good experience. Oh, nice. Um, so that that was awesome. great. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Vafa Vafa Napoli, huh? No, <laughs> that, that was not, that that was a made-up language. But no, because um, they've released tickets, so, so you can start to buy tickets now on the, the the UEFA website. But what they've said that I think at the end of this year, once the qualifying is over, if your team qualifies that you want to follow, you can then start to apply for tickets as well. Because last time, um, I applied for all three tickets for all Turkey's group games, and I had to apply using my Terje Kimlik number. Um, really? Yeah, so you couldn't apply for those with like an English passport. That's uh, kind of. Hmm. So it was like that for every um, nation as well. So if you're like a Swede living in England. Um, like dual nationality like I am you'd have to apply with your, your Swedish passport details to get tickets to all the Sweden home games mm-hmm. yeah but I think you're right Burak uh, head of Dokus Point it has to be 9 points yes um, against those teams you have to take 9 points I think uh, losing in Iceland it's I think we should have always gotten a draw there that, that for us that game had if you look at the schedule that game was the make or break thing uh, I think Going into before the France game, if you would have told me we would we would lose in Reykjavik, I would have said, okay, you know what, then it's over. <laughs> but because we got those bonus three points against France, no no man overboard right now. You know, it, it, we still have everything in our own hands uh, as long as we beat Iceland at home. Um, yeah, uh, for those of you who are wondering what all that noise is, I, I am. I have the windows open. It's extremely hot here. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just we have to win those games. I think there's no ifs or buts, uh, no way around it. Uh, there's no excuse. Those games have to be won. It's a very favorable fixtures right now for us. Um, the schedule is good. So we have to win those games. If you have, what is it, 18 points, and then I guess we play... Uh, we're going to play Iceland. We don't know yet where, I believe. I think it's going to be like Eskishir again or something, probably. Um, perhaps in Istanbul, I don't know. I, I believe one of the next upcoming games is being played in Istanbul. Uh, at Vodafone Park, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it might be the Albania match or something. But, um, yeah, you know, losing to Iceland, it's... We always knew going into this that they were going to be our kind of head head to head rivals, and it's unfortunate that we lost that match, especially because of how pompous our fan base have acted. And I'm pretty sure the the people in Iceland had a good laugh at our expense because of that hashtag and just all the blowing stuff out of proportion. And um, yeah, you know. Let's just wait and see who has the last laugh there, my Icelandic friends. Let's just <laughs> well, wait and see. It's, it's good that we managed to score that goal and it was only 2-1 because now we have a good chance that as long as we beat Iceland, either our head-to-head is going to be level and it's going to come down to goal differential and then we have the advantage because they conceded a buttload against France. Um, so it's it's I believe they conceded 5 against France, didn't they? Or did they not play? They did play France, didn't they? I think they lost like 5-1 yeah, to their one goal or something. Is, that's it, yes. Their goal difference is currently 0, whereas ours is plus 7. Yeah, so as long as we beat them, uh, you know, our head-to-head will be fine and our goal differential is, is usually in our favor. So I think we still are favorites to go through, but of course we will probably have to beat them or get a point against France or something. Um, but I think with with three points in the bag against France, and I think France, given the way that that match went and the whole political hoo-ha they made about you know the fans booing their national anthem and something, maybe Mbappe and company will be a little bit more motivated to make an example out of uh, the Turks when we travel to uh, Paris or wherever that match may be played. Um, do do any of you have anything to add about the Turkish national team? Channel Güneş, uh, did you see? 
cracks starting to show already from one couple of days where we were on a, a massive high and then of course the low following the Iceland match. It was one of those things where everyone after the France game was like, oh, Shenel Ganesh is so glad to have him back. We're going to recapture the glory years of 2002. Oh, he's the best coach ever. Oh, he's this, he's that. Three days later, Shenel Ganesh sucks. He's a coward. He's played boring football. He played the wrong team selection. We can't do anything with Shenel. <laughs> it was a classic kind of Turkish. Uh, roller coaster Turkish mm -hmm. rise. Yeah. Very, we're very fickle fans. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you could call it call it cracks. I think you know he just he got it wrong on that day. Uh, ultimately, he's got to be judged on on results. But we did bet, put in a bit of a performance second half. But I, I think he made some errors as well, such by keeping on Kenan Karaman for as long as he did, for keeping on Hulk, Hakan Shahano for as long as he did, yeah. and the same and the same with Burak Yilmaz. Um, you could see he was just shattered. Um, yeah. So even you know the only real option we had was Guven Yalchin. I'd be like, he's a fresh pair of legs, he's young, mm. he's got no fear, chuck him on and just let him run into some Isla that Icelandic brick wall and see yeah. if he can, can get through it. And it is Iceland, I mean, Guven isn't isn't Cenk Tosun, he's not a, a player that's, you know, been around the block, Champions League games and stuff that I got under his belt, but it's, it's, it is still, at the end of the day, yes, Iceland are a formidable side, but most of those players play at a relatively low level, um, so I, I, I don't think... You could not. I don't think that starting with Guven would have been, a, or at least putting him on a, a, earlier. I mean, I think he came on like the seventy-fifth minute or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we can all, we all have seen before. Hakan Chalan on the wings does not work. He does not have the explosive ability for that. It simply doesn't work. Uh, we have guys like Abdul, Abdul Kadir Umur on the bench. We have Yusuf Yazid on the bench. I really thought that Yusuf immediately had a, a positive impact and yes, later down in the second half he had a couple of painful losses of possession that could have resulted in a in a in a, in a counter goal or something, but he was taking initiative, he was trying. And Hakan Chalano to me, I it, I'm I'm so not a fan of his. To me he's just he's just exceptionally good at direct free kicks and he is very average at everything else. He's not scored a direct free kick for Turkey though, has he? Yeah, he has, I think. Uh, yes, yeah, so, well, recall exactly which game, but not not a good one though. Not like the one like Sergio Kinan scored against yeah, Iceland no. to qualify. Not, he's not a clinical one or anything. No, he's he's I, flattered to deceive. He's I, he's living off the back of those YouTube videos and I, he's, he's yeah. done fuck all. I think he got a deflection in a qualifier or something against was it the Ukraine or in a two-two draw against someone, but I don't remember exactly who it was, but. Um, yeah, for me, he's just been completely underwhelming in almost every single national team match, except for, I think, against Albania, he had a decent performance. That was probably his best ever uh, national team performance. But for me, I mean, that's the t one of the things I, I dislike about Chino Gunesh is that For me, the only reason he put Hakan Chalanola in is because he's higher in the pecking order than a Yusuf Yazidje and an Abdul Kadir Umur. But, sorry, but Yusuf is a better all-round player. Abdul Qadir, okay, he's, he's he's young and he still has a ways to go, but he's so talented and you're lack you you really lack explosiveness on on those wings. If you don't have Genghis, we I don't think we had a single pure winger there. I mean, I guess you could call Kenan a, a winger, but we really lack depth on the wings. Um it's it's such a shame that MR Moore is such a turd sandwich in terms of personality because we could have really done with uh, with his uh, ability. <laughs> He I haven't heard that expression in a very long time. Turd sandwich. And did you did you see the um when they were listing the players while they weren't playing? They said um, they said Cengiz and that knee injury. Mom would take them with thigh injury. M remote Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's such a, <laughs> yeah, I did see that. Yeah, it's, it's such an utter waste that kid. I mean, he's so. He, I mean, his speed and his dribbling ability. Um, I think he has a lot of all other stuff to work on. Like, I actually recently had a, an argument with some of my friends because he's been linked to Besiktas, and I'm like, well, what is he really? I mean, he has incredible speed. He has incredible ability on the ball. But what can he do otherwise? He's not a very good shooter. He's not a very good crosser. He's not necessarily a clinical finisher or anything like that. So people are saying he could be like. A superstar level player but if you don't tick one of those boxes 
I don't think you're ever going to be exceptional, like truly exceptional at the at the world stage. I think you need to be either a, a goal scoring winger, someone who can give a proper assist or something like that. I think he's still lacking that. I'm not saying he can't do that if he would put his mind to it. I'm sure he could develop into a, a fantastic player, but he's just one of those. It's weird. He grew up in in what in Sweden or or whatever in Denmark. And, Denmark. Yeah, yeah, and he's and he's such a typical Turk. You know, he's, such a, such a bottom. Yeah, like how do you achieve that? Yeah, yeah. He's he's going to be know. 22 in July. He's going to be 22, mm-hmm. and he's still done absolutely sweet fuck all at Celta Vigo. He um, lacks brains. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We need a brain transplant for that. I mean, yeah, and, he was the but, great hope at Euro 2016. Yeah, and he gave us some spark there. You know, he he did show that he has that ability to break open a game there, just in a couple of flashes. He's a flashy player, and he can do that, but. He's just, you know, it's such a waste of talents. And I, I, I don't see him coming back from that. For me, it's just going to be one of those guys that in 10 years' time we're going to be talking about what if, you know. Like a, like a Botohan Karadinis yeah. type thing. It's exactly. like what could have been. Mm-hmm. And he'll, he'll probably be like, I don't know, three stone overweight doing reality TV shows somewhere. Yeah, he'll be sitting next to um, Umit Uzat uh, smoking cigars. Uh-huh. Being equally fat. Uh, say says the fat man. Um, I don't know. Does anyone have anything to add to the Turkish national team debate discussion? Nah, let's get on to gossip. Okay, let's 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 get on to gossip indeed. Uh, shall we do it in alphabetical order? Because I think the juiciest stuff comes at the end of the alphabet. Uh, <laughs> that's okay with you guys. <laughs> We're talking about Zongul Duck Sport today. Damn, I didn't know that. <laughs> uh. Well, uh, let, let's quickly dig into some rumors. I'll, I'll open some uh, some Bishik Dish related stuff here before this huge truck passes by. God damn stupid traffic. Did you hear that? <laughs> yes, but it's okay. It's okay? Oh, okay. Well, let's, yeah. let's quickly like dig into some of the, the Bishik Dish rumors. So, uh, Burak Yilmaz has apparently attracted the attention of a newly promoted Serie A side Lecce in Italy. Uh, they seem to be quite keen on acquiring Burak, but uh, Besiktas and Burak supposedly have turned down the offers. Um, I don't know at this point. I, I wouldn't mind seeing Burak make a move to, to Italy. I think he should have moved abroad, not counting China, like five years ago or something. But it, w- it would be fun to see him make that move. But of course, for Besiktas... He's thirty. He's, he's almost thirty-four years old. Uh, I think he's about to have a birthday this month or something. Um, you know, can you really get a decent transfer fee for someone like him still? And can you, for that money, get an equally good player? I highly doubt it. So it's probably something that won't happen. Uh, Dorokan Tokus has also attracted the attention of Udinese. Supposedly, uh, they have. Reportedly, put in a 12 million offer, which Besiktas have rejected as they want 15 million. He's also being linked to Liverpool. Uh, yeah, right. Like everyone is being linked to Liverpool in Turkey uh, today. Uh, I think Elif Elmas has been linked to Liverpool. I think uh, Abdul Kadir Omur has been linked to Liverpool. I think, um, you know, uh, Ertuğrul Tashkiran has been linked to Liverpool. <laughs> Everyone's being linked to Liverpool. <laughs> uh, everyone on the show is going to be linked to Liverpool by the end of the transfer window. <laughs> And Besiktas are also interested in Everton forward Ademola Lokman. So apparently Abdullah Avci is quite keen on him. It would be a loan move, but it's it's a difficult transfer supposedly. Uh, but that that could make sense. I could see that happen. Um, I don't know if there's anything else big Besiktas related. Oh yeah, there was a little. I don't know if you guys saw this. Uh, Ricardo Quaresma throwing a little fit on Instagram because of something that Fikret Orman supposedly said, which he didn't say. Uh, well, Besiktas have come out and denied. But Fanatic published uh, an article earlier today with some quotes from. Uh, Fa- Fikret Orman, basically, in which he said uh, that 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 he that Quaresma has been letting the team down, and he he's no position to make demands, and they're gonna give him his money and send him on his way, and blah and blah and blah. So uh, Quaresma got apparently very annoyed by that, made a statement on Instagram, um, and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know if you've been playing in Turkey for let's see, off and on six or seven years, shouldn't you know by now that not to trust fanatic? <laughs> As a credible source for quotes or anything, for that even matter. the even the date on the front you shouldn't trust. <laughs> exactly. So, 
like fanatic photo much or yeah. it's all the same yeah. it's good for, good for cleaning the windows of your car but that's <laughs> about it. it it's a real shame i think he's kind of tarnishing his legacy with the, with that kind of stuff and uh, it's it's a shame that that players like that can't leave in beauty so to speak you know we've we've had to obviously Gorejma is not alex but you know i mean is probably the closest thing comparable in terms of foreigners for Besiktas uh, to Alex. So it, it's a shame that, that that the player like that can't leave in, in beauty. You know, Wesley Snyder didn't leave in, in a nice way either. Alex didn't leave in a nice way. Quaresma is not going to leave in a nice way. I don't get why that, that, that it is in Turkey. Why can't you just, you know, leave... A player in his dignity, and vice versa, the, him leaving the, them leaving the club in their dignity. Although I, that definitely wasn't a, an issue with Alex or, or, or Snyder, I think. But uh, it's a little bit of an sh- unfortunate thing. Um, then I'm just quickly going to throw to you, Umut, in terms of official stuff. What has been uh, announced yet? Because the transfer window has officially opened. So which transfers and, and which managerial changes have happened, have occurred? Well, uh, officially... Uh it says that uh, Christian Sapunauer of Kaiserspor has moved to Denizli Spor, uh, which is a new team for the Super League. Uh, and Eskisher Sports Fratjan Uzum uh, came to Trabzonspor as a free transfer. Uh, he's a right winger, a uh, young one. And Fatih Öztürk, the goalke- goalkeeper of Akisar, moved to Kasım Pasha this season. Uh, Chakurize Sports out of Sheishu uh, transferred to Antalya Sport, and also Sivas Sport bought a goalkeeper from uh, Troyes uh, League One team, uh, Mamadou Samassa, as a free transfer once again. And uh, Alanya Sport bought a striker from Ayek, which do I pronounce correctly? A E K Ayek. Ike uh, Athens, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, Athens. Yeah, the Greek champions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, Anas- pa- Pauk are the champions. Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. Whoops, yeah. they finished third, yeah. Uh, they bought Anastasios Bakasetas, uh, a striker, uh, by uh, 800,000 euros. And Fenerbahce bought Murat Salam, a right back from Wolfsburg, uh, young, uh, younger uh, right back. And also, Kasim Pasha loaned the uh, uh, center back from FC Porto, Jorge Fernandez. Konya uh, Spor loaned uh, Riyad Bayic once again, came to Konya Spor from Udinese as a loan. Uh, also, uh, Kaleb Ekuban came to Trabzonspor as a permanent transfer by 1 million euros from Leeds United. Then Ozan Tufan came back to Fenerbahce as an end of his loan at Alanya Spor. Uh, finally, Bernat Mensa uh, was bought from Atletico Madrid after a couple of seasons he played in Super League to Kaiser Spor from, uh, I think, uh, 3.60 million euros. Wow, and that's a big, pretty big fee for uh, Kaiser Spor. Yeah, but yeah. I, he's so a that, younger. Well, that money, so he's got some yes. money. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Aziz Beic returned to Super League from PSV Antoven to Başakşehir here yeah. for Whoa. 1 million euros. We already knew that, though. I mean, that was already announced like two, three weeks ago. So, yeah, uh, yeah. But it's definitely a good transfer. It's a player that if I was Besiktas, I would have gone after. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I blocked all Başakşehir related news out of my mind. So this is the first <laughs> time I'm hearing that. But that's a great, great transfer. Yeah, Can yeah. we mention the, um, the after Sheju... Announcement video that Antalya Sport released, oh, which yeah. is yeah. classy, classy. Just he's um for for those of you who've not seen it, and and for those that are oh, listening who so want you know just a breakdown, um you you get a shot from behind of Art of Sheshu. You could, don't know it's him. He's like swinging in a chair by the beach having a tea, and then his phone goes off and it says. It's from Bashkan, it says, and it's like Tati Bitti Ish Bashli or something like that. It's like oh. no holidays over, time to get to work. And he replies, Tavan Bashkan and like, oh. All right, chairman. And then you see him doing keepy uppies and the camera slowly pans up and it's Artif. Um and he just gives like this thumbs up and it says something like Antalya Spurs or something. He's Antalya Spurs or something or, or yeah. Yeah. It's just like a really horrendous like it's just like Cringe. you know 
cringe and these things have now become the norm in Turkish football. It's like yeah. now everyone's doing that. They're trying to do different versions of these like announcement videos and yeah. they're just getting more and more ridiculous. Look what you've done, Besiktas. That comes to Besiktas <laughs> thing started off this fiasco. Yeah, we really, we really... Bam, bam, bam. We, how do you say it? We opened a can of worms with yeah, that one. Exactly, yeah, exactly. At least, really at least kind of ours worms. was a good kind of cringe, you know. It was, it was like... We know it's bad, you know, but this is this is serious stuff. Yeah, I think. Too I don't bad think... that it was good. Yeah, exactly. It was so <laughs> bad it was good, but this stuff is just no. It's just, you know, ah. I'm looking forward to like you know. Eventually, I think the production is going to go up in these. We're going to get also, like like uh, film stars and pop stars. The videos. Coaches moved from the teams, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mustafa Denizli resigned from Kasım Pasha and went to Tractor Sezi FC. I don't know what the hell what? that. Is. Yeah, Tractor oh, yeah. Sezi FC. In t- retirement home wrong. or something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's uh, not Ipswich, is it? The Tractor Boys. It's not there. <laughs> no. Uh, also, so- Sergan Yelchin moved to Evkur Yeni Malatya Spor from Alany Alanya Spor uh, after uh, the resignation of the previous manager, uh, which was his name. <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, Errol Bulut. Yeah, Errol Bulut. Yeah. Errol. Uh, also, uh, Abdullah Avcı came to Beşiktaş from Başakşehir, mm-hmm. uh, and also a former Kasım Pasha manager returned to Kasım Pasha, Kemal Özdesh. Oh, did he? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I never understood why he was fired in the first place. And and the funny thing is, so Sergen moves from. Alanya to Malatya and Errol, who of right. course he resigned a while ago, but he basically moves from Malatya to Alanya. So it's like it's like revolving chairs, you know. Yeah. Like, you know that, well, that game where yeah, you put it's, it's, it's all like wife, like wife swap. Been all day. Wife swap. <laughs> wife swap. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you guys know that that, that game w- with the chairs and you're like walking oh, around well, and yeah, then they yeah. take a chair away? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what it is. So Mustafa Denizli's chair was taken away and uh, you know, moved and to also, also, another former Super League manager, Marius Sumuditsa, oh. uh, came from Al Shabab to Gazishir, a newcomers of the Super League. Yeah, good coach. And lastly, Okan Buruk moved from Chaikur Riza to Bashakshi here. Yeah, good sign. Oh, uh, yes. For sure. You know the natural. I think that's the only the only yeah. thing they could have done that made sense to basically appoint uh, someone who studied under Avcı to continue that that uh, structure. Really, uh, any other manager would have probably had a, a far longer adjustment period. I think Okan Burak is is a very good decision by Bishakir, and I'm I'm very curious to see uh, how Abdullah Avcı will do at Bishkek. But I think he'll, uh, you know, if he's allowed to implement his 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 ways of working. Think it'll uh, end end up being good for them in the, in the long run, but obviously the question is, can they compete against uh, a, a Galatasaray who are uh, probably going to make a couple of uh, interesting signings? But let's get to the Fenerbahce related news first. Let's stay alphabetical. Uh, Burak, what's going on on the other side of Istanbul? Well, I think it's pretty much a done deal that Emre Belezolo is coming back to a club. There have been rumours and rumours, but um, on the, the most recent win-win Fenerbahce fundraiser show, he actually dialed in to speak with uh, the host. I think uh, our old player Rudvan was on the panel, and he said, hi, Olsen Emre. Um, his contract runs out on the 30th of June, I believe, with Başak Şehir. So by all means, it looks no, no, like no. every all the contracts in Turkey run out on the thirty first of May. Uh, the thirtieth of June is just transfer market, but uh, uh, you can see it on the, the actual dates are on uh, the TFF website, and his contract has expired. So I'm pretty ah, sure his announcement okay. will be done quickly. Thank you for the um, correction the, and, the, and the yep, detective work there. In, indeed, detective can't and um, yeah, so he's going to be coming back. Um, there was some news earlier on Twitter that we two young players from the under 21s have been promoted to train with the first team squad this summer. So you've got Yusuf Mertunc, um, who had a good season for the under 21s this season, and uh, Mohamed Gumushkaya, uh, central midfielder. So they're going to be training with the first team this summer with a view to getting promoted into the first team come the start of the season. Um, so that's also um, news that has been 
uh, broken on Twitter by various different accounts. So looking forward to seeing those guys in some training matches. Um, especially Yusuf Matunch, she looks um, a decent prospect, but can he make that step up is always the, the question, but you never know if you don't give them a chance. Um, those are the only ones that are pretty much confirmed. I know uh, I touched on Walat Salam, who came on a free transfer from Wolfsburg. Um, I don't know what's going on with the Boris Shalaji situation. Um, I've not seen any concrete news, but it, that should be end of loan return. Yeah, was he loaned for six months or for one and a half seasons? I believe it was six months, and the same with Ozan. So it'd be interesting. I mean, if someone comes in with like a one or two million euro bid for Ozan, I'd sell him personally. Um, yeah. I don't know oh. if we can get that much more out of him. Maybe um, you should uh, give him one more season. He uh, was a big investment, seven million, you know, and he has shown some promise at Alanya. Maybe he can get back to a decent level. Well, he's he's, he's uh, lost a lot of weight as well. If you see his before and after pictures, um, when he's training, and then he's like as he was in his last stage at Fener, he was a bit of a chunky monkey, but um, he he looks to have he leaned up under the uh, ice cream. Indeed, um, the Sargan diet of Raku and gambling seems to have <laughs> <laughs> helped him lose some weight. Um, Dan Alanya and the heat has probably helped as well. Um, the rumor will wise offers apparently are still coming in for Elif Elmas every single day from a number of clubs around the world. Uh, mm. Nothing concrete uh, yeah. yet. Um, the big talk of um, Alexander Kolarov from Roma. But I know Roma are currently going through some structural changes. I think they're appointing a new director yeah, of football. Once you get went back to Sevilla. So until that has been sorted out and everything's, they've got their house in order. There's going to be no. I think news that would on. be a very good signing, by the way. I mean, he, I know he's he's like what thirty four. Yeah. But he, he would really add some much needed experience. I think uh, some, some leadership along some, with Emre. Some grinta. Uh, something the Fenerbahce have been lacking, and I think uh, that would be cojones, yeah, cojones, yeah, yeah, as sure. they say. So and a good free um, kick, <laughs> and, a, and a good free kick, and indeed a, a good left foot. So and and lead, leadership. But I mean, Oli Koch was mentioning that in his recent um, address that Fenerbahce did um, at the weekend, saying that we're looking for leaders with like grit and leadership and qualities. So I think that speaks directly to. To yeah, Kolarov and, and Emre, um, I think we've been linked with Ben Arthur again, like we have been like for the last <laughs> ten seasons. Yeah. Um, so you can never take those seriously. Um, and I think that the most there, there's still stories around Max Kruse, um as well. Um, but you know he's apparently been shopped around to a few different clubs by his agent. I think he's. He's said that Fenerbahce it might be like a potential a potential backup choice for him if he doesn't get his um, chosen move. So, for me personally, I'm not holding out any hope for Max Kruse. Um Simon Kea has come on holiday to Istanbul, so naturally he's been linked with a return back to the club, just like Edin Dzeko was when he came to Istanbul for a holiday. Um, everyone who comes to Istanbul for a holiday is linked with Fenerbahce. Um Kevin De Bruyne, um, um, him as Both well. Yeah. <laughs> oh right, right. Oh, are you, are we gonna talk about this? About this amazing, amazing statement <laughs> from Bodrum Spor? Let's Ke- hear it. Let's hear it. Kevin De Bruyne was on was spotted on holiday in Bodrum, and Bodrum Spor basically made a public oh, statement yes. that they are not in negotiations with Kevin De Bruyne. <laughs> <laughs> and it, that, that came out like a couple of days after like the the Jaco stuff, I think. So it was kind of a little bit of a, a mockery there for, for on 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 the media just because because they they make such a circus out of everything. Uh, but uh, hey, I, I do want to talk a little bit about um, those rumors for for AF Elmas because uh, isn't he just a little bit of a big balloon right now? Well. If you look at how much Atletico Madrid, or who is that player from Atletico Madrid that they're offering a hundred million, million euros for? I think uh, they're uh, Atletico are making a one hundred and twenty million move for for Joao Felix, I think from from Joao Felix. Yeah, yeah. So if if Joao Felix is worth that, then Ed of Helmas is worth twenty million euros. Definitely. Ha, come on, man. It, no, I'm talking. If Joe Felix is yeah, worth that, then Edith is worth that. You're, you're yeah, talking I'm, about. I watched player... him live, and he was just decent. 
Yeah, yeah he has but potential, it, but, but but it's 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 the tr it's like when you buy a Ferrari, you know, you pay more because it's Benfica, because it's the Portuguese champions, because they're a factory of of, of yeah. decent players that, that have gone made those big moves. There's a reason why Turkish clubs can't get very big fees. We only I mean, recently you broke Talishka from the same word. Yeah. We didn't buy him, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we couldn't. Too expensive. But you know, I mean, it's it's the thing. We, I, you know, if if Fenerbahce would have had a good season with, with Champions League or, or at least a good run in the Europa League or something, and and Elif was a standout performer, then I, then I'd buy it. But look look at the the season. Jing, I'm not saying Jing Tosun is a fantastic player or anything. You know, I think 23 million was amazing to get that for him, but. If you look at the season he had, the performance he had shown, okay, he was 26 or something, he was a lot older than Elif is, but they're not keen on paying those huge fees, and I don't think Elif has done anything really that warrants a 20-plus million fee right now. I think that if you can get more than 10, you're lucky. And I'm not saying that you should sell him, by the way. I think he has the potential to be worth a lot more. I just don't see it realistic right now. I, I still think he's going to stay for another season. I know there's yes. lots of interest coming in. Um, we, we don't know how much of this is true, what yeah, we read. That's the question. Um, exactly. So, you know, talks of like Napoli are the latest team to have bid 15 million euros, apparently. But, I mean, that's just through the various Twitter sources. That I can't yeah. link it back to anything official from the club. Um, I definitely don't believe anything like Fanatic or... I, I think if, or... if Fenerbahce or, or Besiktas get a, get a 12, 15 million euro for a guy like, like Dorokan, for a guy like Elif, I don't think there there's going to be much ro time for rumors. Those guys are going to be off to the, on their plane and, and, and being sold straight away. Yeah, we know. I'll be there driving them to the airport. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd, but obviously I'd love him to stay for another season hopefully we have a better season next season where he plays more regularly week in week out and performs to a high level that is yet, you know, yet to How be old seen is he now? 19 or 20? I believe he's still 19 yeah. I don't know when he's going to so, be 20 yeah so I mean if you let's say you, you September you, 24th yeah. Well, let's say you end top two this season or whatever, and you go to the Champions League next season, and then he has a, as a run in the Champions League. Um, I, I think then you then you could be looking at a decent amount of money if he's uh, if he turns out if he continues developing because I think he did you know in the beginning of the season, the first half of the season, he didn't play all that much, but when he played, it didn't really impress me that much. And then, but towards these last couple of weeks, he did get on the score sheet a couple of times. He didn't necessarily play too well, but you know. You can see that there's something there. He has that knack for getting a goal. Uh, something that Sali Uchan had too. Um, I think that, that that with a little bit, like a season or two more under his belt of first team football, he's going to be a really good player. I just don't think he's there yet right now. And I think that at this stage of his development to make a big move, I, I he'd get lost on the bench, he'd get lost in the shuffle, or he'd have to get loaned out. I don't think he's ready for a big move yet. He's, he's not ready to be a leader in Fenerbahce yet. And he, he grew his hair back. And I think as soon as his hair grew back, he started performing better. The shaved head didn't suit him. And um, <laughs> so that is another thing to, to note about Elif. And also on the, the Fenerbahce news front, apparently um, Nabil Dira was caught smoking shisha on the beach. Um, okay. So that made the rounds on, on Twitter today. What's um, wrong with that? <laughs> He's uh, on his holiday. Uh, Absolutely nothing, but like I say, they've they've taken a, a molehill and made it into a mountain mm. or volcano that is erupting lava and burning villages, as Turks love to do. I mean, uh, unless he put some hash in there or something, I don't know, but... I think yeah. it was double apple. I think it was classic oh, double, apple. double apple. I can tell by the clouds. Okay. Yeah, just, <laughs> Indeed, just, so... Just, and, and that, I think, brings it to the end of the, the rumor mill for Fenerbahce. Lubomir Fecha, dude. Lubomir Fecha. Why are you not Fecha. talking about him? Because I don't think it's going to happen. I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think that might happen. Uh, pretty but concrete it, stuff coming out of Portugal on that one. 3 million euro fee. 1.8 million a year for the player. I think that's a good deal. He's a good player. Very good player. Um, just very injury prone, unfortunately. He's he's just thirty years old, but he could he's he's again one of those experienced players, uh, and and I think the type that you could really use next to Emre. But the question is how how much of a role is Emre gonna play on the pitch? I think he's gonna probably play about 
I'm going to stick my neck out and say about 10 to 15 games. Um, yeah. uh, those 10 to 15, will he play the full 90? Mm, probably not in every single one. Um, and I, th- I think the real place where we're going to see his influence is in, in training, um, just talking and being around the players um, day in, day out in the training grounds, um, on, on the pitch, um, with them um, helping to the youngsters like uh, uh, Jailson, Elif, mm-hmm. Ferdi, um, hopefully the two youngsters, uh, Yusuf Mert and Mohamed, hopefully he gets to play a little bit with Omar uh, Beaz Farouk as well, the, the starlet who's um, in the under-16s, I think he's still 15 at the moment, um, hopefully he gets some time with him. I think that's the influence we're going to see from him. Um, as for Fedsha, um, if he can stay fit, because he's had an absolutely horrendous last 10 years with injuries, if you look at his um, injury stats, he's been out for about a com- combined yeah, two months a season or something. It, exactly, and, you know that's you know you paid all that money, you don't want someone to be going off onto the injury bed straight away. But we'll we'll, we'll wait and see really. And um, well, like I said, we can't, we can't really do anything anyway until the end of June, when mm-hmm. that we we have our meeting with UEFA. Um, but you know, in the meantime, uh, Platini was arrested today. So fuck detained, you. detained, detained, arrested. Same thing. So fuck you, Michelle. Um, that's what. Oh no, get. we're gonna get sued now. <laughs> Indeed. Um, so might want, might want to edit that bit out. Or no, just Tur- leave Turkish, it. Uh, leave uh, it in. Fo- football Ala Turka is not responsible, nor does it share the thoughts of one Burak Sezgin. Uh, <laughs> so if you want to sue anyone, uh, sue Mister Sezgin. <laughs> leave but, us out of it. <laughs> t- two words for you, Michelle. Suck it. I'll end it on that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's going to be interesting what's going to happen there, you know, I mean, uh, the 2022 World Cup being awarded to Qatar, that was a very weird decision for sure. Um, but let's get, you know what, uh, before we had uh, the Marcotti interview, I think we had uh, an, a first episode with some rumors in it, and it was quite Besiktas heavy. Uh, there's not much to talk about in terms of Besiktas, we just had some Fenerbahce stuff, but there's quite a little bit going on in uh, in Istanbul, but not with Bishtesh or Fenerbahce, but Galatasaray are having some exciting rumors right now. Um, Uzer, can you run down what's going on yes. with Jimbom? Well, let's start with the uh, let's start with the the two boring subjects, the two pseudo done deals, namely Ryan Babel and Shener from Fenerbahce. So Ryan Babel is looking as though he's coming in um, on a one plus one year deal. Uh, he's 32 years old, but you know I'm not totally against his transfer because he knows the league pretty well. He's he's back in the Netherlands squad. He's a pretty pretty safe bet. And on a one plus one deal for a 32 year old, okay, cool. It's not the end of the world. Whether or not it's going to be an upgrade over Onyekuru because it's looking unlikely that Onyekuru is going to come back, that is very much up for debate. I don't think he's going to fill that role at all. But for a squad rotation player, it's it's decent. Chanel, on the other hand, I just Okay, I just don't know why we, as Galatasaray and Fenerbahce, end up picking each other's trash. I mean, why do we have to go and sign this guy and spend some 900,000 euros a year on him? Why did you guys have to sign Tolga Giyaji, who we let go for free? I mean, I just don't understand the uh, the dynamics of these of these transfers, personally. Um, but, yeah, okay, so those two, are, let's, let's put them in the bucket of done deals. Now, onto the exciting stuff, onto the, onto the rumours. The hot name right now is, of course, Sevilla's Banega, Eva Banega. So he is, he still has a year left on his contract, which is the thing that worries me most about this transfer. Uh, insofar as, are we going to actually be able to put the, put the money together to sign him, to buy him out of his contract? Um, if we can, it will be an absolute coup for the club. He is a superb player. He, he was instrumental in Sevilla's first two Europa League titles. Then, of course, he, that, he won the move to Inter. Kind of flopped at Inter, to be honest, but then he came back to Sevilla. Nah, who doesn't flop at Inter? Yeah, exactly. Look, Nangalan flopped. He flopped. A lot of players. Inter is like the, the flop zone of Serie A. That's where good so players go to. It, <laughs> yeah, careers exactly. That goes to exactly, exactly, exactly. If my friend Nima listens to this, he's going he's gonna to kill me. <laughs> but uh, it's unfortunately a little bit the sad truth uh, with, with yeah. Inter. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. That's true. And he, he, on top of that, he's got the 65 caps, I believe, for Argentina, which is a pretty big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, also, he 
I think he picked up some 16 yellow and one red card last year. So, like, he's perfectly made for Galatasaray in the Turkish <laughs> League. Uh, he's, I think he's a... He, I don't know. I think he's a perfect Turkish League player for sure. I mean, I, yeah. that type of player does really well in Turkey. You know, that, that sophisticated, deep-playing playmaker type. Um, what was the guy called again that Bursa had that came from Porto? Uh, a couple of years ago, yeah, Belushi. Oh, yeah. And how amazing was he? He was and, a superb and, player, and he's like the, the the poor man's version of Ever Banega. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? I think that's a pretty fair comparison, actually. And Belushi was a superb player. Yeah, would he have was. taken him. Yeah. Would have taken him for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Although apparently, a couple of hours ago, before before we came on to record, I did see some news that Monchi, who's now at Sevilla, as you mentioned, mm-hmm. apparently spoke to Bain International and said, "Galatasaray have made no contact with us so far for anyone." Yeah, but that doesn't but, mean anything. No. Uh, clubs always talk to players first. That's just the yeah. way it goes. I know that's not yeah. how it's supposed to go, but that's how it goes. Right. You know, a club right. isn't going to waste uh, three months of negotiation, well, three weeks of negotiations on a player that turns out. You know, it doesn't work like in football manager where you're like negotiating, 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 and I finally get a deal, and then you talk to the player, he's like, nope, not interested. Yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, how yeah. it works, you know. Yeah, um, exactly. So that doesn't I mean, mean, doesn't th- mean this is this is the kind of transfer that will that will help those those sexy new kits fly off the shelves if we can sign Eva Benega. I mean, I'm really excited about the potential of this. But on the other hand, the other um, really kind of left field rumor, of course, in the same position is Mr. Juan Mata, who is going to be a free agent next month. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen a lot of kind of rumors around uh, around. Um, linking him with Delta Strike. In fact, a, a, a Man United friend, supporting friend of mine asked me the other day, is it true that Matt is going to Gala? And I said, is it? That's the third I, first I've heard of it. You must yeah, have heard it from a Turkish source. <laughs> and then he sent me, yeah, I know, he sent me a few links and he said, no, no, none of these link back to Turkish sources. So instantly I thought, well, it must be quite reliable then. Um, so we'll see. I mean, there's he's no reason the why not. player a Turkish he's, club would go after for exactly. sure. Exactly. He's 31, I believe. He's got the credentials. He's won the Champions mm-hmm. League. He's famous, he's played in Chelsea, United, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And, of course, he's going to be a free player. So give him a nice, um, juicy sign-on bonus and sign him up to a three-, four-year million contract. And Bob's yeah, And if you, if you sell Belhanda for 10-plus million or something oh, to Qatar... Yeah, I'll personally yeah. contribute to that fund. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, everybody Banega coming in, that could be to replace Belhanda, but that could yeah. also be to coexist with Belhanda. I mean, those aren't players that necessarily have to play in the same position. Um but Juan yeah. Mata, I think if he comes in, then well, I guess Belhanda could move to to an eight role, but which he yeah. kind of plays anyway. I, but. I, yeah, he kind of does that anyway when he backs him when he's not even concentrating. But I think either of the, I mean, the, even being linked with Benega so so closely me, signals to me that Belhanda might be on his way out. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the club has look, put a price of at least ten million euros on his head. Yeah. Which is which is fair, which is reasonable. Yeah, you paid eight or nine. Exactly, so. exactly, exactly. And he's done um, well statistically. At least I know you're not a fan, but I think he's done pretty well, and he's still young enough to warrant a decent fee. Yeah, I mean that that much is true. Yeah, he he's certainly is worth at least ten million in in the market in today's mm-hmm. market. Um, sure. So so let's say Belhanda goes for ten. There's also the big issue of Mbaye Jagne, the top <laughs> scorer, the everybody's favorite player. Yeah. Um, he was linked recently to some Saudi club, to some Al Shabab, I think. Al Shabab right? was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, also in the region of about ten million. So if we can offload these two guys and get twenty million euros out off the back of it, that would be a huge, huge benefit for us. Mm-hmm. Now I've also seen some rumours of a certain Danny Welbeck, <laughs> um, who was unloved by Manchester United, who was ridiculed. He'd by probably Arsenal. do great in Turkey. Honestly, to be exactly. He will find heaven in hell. If you came to Galatasaray, like as as an Arsenal fan too, I I mean I think this guy has a lot of talent, but just uh, didn't really get much, many chances, and he's suffered terribly from injuries. I think he's only played about eight games last season. That's the biggest concern for me. Did he's, 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 he's agent, scored but... he scored a hat trick against you at the Emirates, yeah, did. didn't he? Yeah, that's yeah. right. He did. He did. He oh, was well. that that match <laughs> in the Arsenal? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> celebrating each goal. 
Ah, yeah. <laughs> God. Oh, man. Uh, but That's he's been linked to, to a move to, to Besiktas for, for the last three, four years, too. And, and Galatasaray, I think. He's, he's been linked to Turkish clubs so often. I, just, I don't think that's happening. Well, yeah, but now he's going to be a free agent, you see. So, again, yeah. like the matter situation, these guys want to play Champions League football. These guys want to get um, a nice big paycheck. They want to live in a great city. I mean, if I were either Welbeck or Mata, I'd be begging my agent to move to Galatasaray. Umut, what do you think? Uh, what, what excites you, Ever Banega? What, what, what does not excite you? Uh... Yeah, I really want to see Ever Banega in Galatasaray because, in my opinion, he is the kind of player you want to see in Galatasaray and Fatih Terim also wants to I see him. I do not want to see him at Galatasaray, thank <laughs> you. I would very uh, much prefer that not to happen. Uh, the main playmaker, uh, he will be, which Galatasaray still lacks because Balhanda somehow failed to possess uh, because he somehow manages to lose the ball uh, on the midfield and uh, somehow fails to create attacks during the games. In some games, he uh, just plays really good and the other one, he just cannot do the same thing. I believe Terim is planning to use Belhanda as a box-to-box kind of stamina player and will give the playmaker role to Ever Banega for the season and really wants to uh, Banega transfer. But uh, in case uh, in the Mat- uh, Juan Mata situation, I don't really think it is likely because Mata is the kind of player uh, Fatih Terim doesn't like uh, right now in the older days he loves these kind of players but uh, in this time he just wants a uh, fighter kind of players and mm-hmm. Mata is just a uh, pure talent you know uh, mm-hmm. so soft kind of player and yeah. lacks yeah. The, yeah, lacks the defensive contribution Fatih Terim would like to see on the field so in addition to that uh, considering his old age he's not getting any younger and I don't Real things. This transfer is quite likely uh, because of the type of player Mata is right now. Mm. I think that's a good point. He is a much softer player. He's almost uh, how Arsenal fans describe Özil as a luxury player. Yeah, um, yeah, just same kind of Snyder kind of yeah. player. Well, well, for me, Snyder is in a league of his own because he his contribution. Both in terms of the gameplay and in terms of goals and assists was just was huge. But you I think Mata you know. kind of sits doesn't have that kind of obvious contribution in the same way. Snyder uh, just gets so, stuck into. I mean, he 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 cared. Yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. Certain absolutely. games, absolutely. And, yeah, Snyder, yeah. you could roll, always rely on. Um, although you mentioned about the age, although one Mata is I think thirty one, and Benega turns thirty one next week, so they are mm. about the similar age. But I definitely agree that Benega is a more combative. Uh, type of player that Terim Terim really needs because we don't have the quality and we're not going to be able to invest in the quality all over the pitch that we need to compete in the Champions League. So we need to make up for those deficiencies by having players who are happy to get 16 yellow cards and one red card every season. <laughs> and he's the kind of perfect fit for that. Also, uh, I saw Fatir mentioning about the 4-3-3 formation and uh, not having a, like a 10 uh, role player. Uh, so, I think that's the, one of the reasons uh, Mata transfer is quite unlikely. Uh, that Banega will sweep into playmaker role of the center mm-hmm. midfield uh, with Belhanda and uh, defensive kind of player uh, between them. Uh, just ha- handling the holder position. Yeah, Fernando. You know, you already yeah. have him. Yeah, yeah. And Donk. Yeah, I think you need to get rid of him. <laughs> Well, I'm not, not I like rid of him. him. I think he's a good like squad depth player, but he's not a starter. Come on, if you're gonna go into the Champions League, if you yeah, want yeah, to, yeah, 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 he's old and in fourth place. Yeah, yeah, both of them are old enough uh, to. Oh. Fernando is still really good. Uh, Banega is still really good. I think you need a. I think you need a dog on Tokus type uh, next to. If you get Banega, I think you need a that, that young upcoming type player next to them. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, but. Who? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Can't. Fuck, Baba. Oh, get well soon. Well, I don't yeah. know if Emre is really... I don't know if he would have fit into that. I guess well, he, he, he would have been an option, at least. Yeah, he been an yeah option. definitely. 
Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Burak? Are you looking forward to Ever Banega coming to Turkey to grace uh, us with his presence at Galatasaray? <laughs> well, I'd love to see him play in the Super League. Obviously, I wouldn't like to see him play for Galatasaray as it would make them even stronger than they are right now. But it's it's a good it would be a good sign that the Super League can still attract um, a quality player. Um, so I think obviously the prospect of Champions League football is extremely high and it's directly into the group stages as well. So there's no chance of playing a qualifier and getting eliminated. Yeah. So you have six guaranteed games as well, which I think yeah. is a huge, huge yeah. plus point for players when they sign. Sure. So, you know, sometimes players go with the promise of Champions League football, but, you know, you're you're playing qualifiers and you might not even get into the proper competition. So that's a, a massive plus um, and um, a hook to get him in. Um, I think it just comes down to whether you can afford him, really. Um, but like you say, if you make the sales of Jagnet and Balhanda, you've, you've raised the funds mm. as well. But with, you know, Mustafa Cenk is talking about some of the financial issues recently in the press, um, you know, not making them um, really clear like Fenerbahce have done saying we're in this much debt, we're fucked, you know, we're going bankrupt. But, you know, just little drop mentions here saying, you know, we're not going to, you know, let the financial troubles um, worry us too much. Um, it's just a case of whether you can raise the funds. But like I say, through, through, through player sales, I think that could be, reach quite easily so get on the phone to your friends in Saudi and they get Bahanda <laughs> and Jagna just shipped off to yeah. Al-Hilal and then the man bring, bring Ben Egering. Um but yeah if he does come I'm looking forward to, to seeing him play um, but obviously you know at the same time thinking shit he's gone to Galta side it's going to make them a stronger team yeah he's a he's a I like him a lot he's a player I've wanted at Bishtesh but thought that was impossible for many years uh, it would be, I, I, I'd have to admit, I would be green of envy if he would end up signing for, for Galtz, right? He's the type of player I, I I really don't want to see go to a rival. He's a, he's a fantastic player. Le, uh, but uh, what's the, the feeling like on, on Ryan Babel, uh, Umut? Uh, what do you think about that as a Onyukuro replacement? Because he's headed back to Everton, of course, for uh, at the end of his loan. Yes, but... Uh... I think there's a bit of problem about his work permit uh, in England, I think. Uh, if that uh, works out, uh, hopefully we can loan him back, uh, I believe, but it's quite unlikely as well. Uh, about Babel, I really like him. Uh, even though he's old, uh, he can manage to create chances and score goals about his long shots as well. Uh, but uh, also remember him uh, wasting his chance against Galatasaray uh, when Besiktas had a chance of championship title a year ago in Tete Arena. Uh, so I think that kind of composure he uh, doesn't want to handle in these occasions. However... Uh, Occasion. Occasion, yeah. <laughs> uh, however, uh, we can also use him as a striker uh, because uh, uh, he now uh, loses his pace uh, and speed and uh, turn him into a like a goal scorer kind of player in the center position yeah he's very versatile you can use him in different positions I think that the, the form he's been on since returning from the sandbox uh, going to Deportivo then you know what was it uh one half season at Besiktas, uh-huh. uh, and 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 he, you know he was great for Besiktas the first six months. He was he was very good. I, I thought he was good in his second season too. Um, and the first six months of, of this season, he was he was pretty decent. He had yeah, you know he was off and on a little bit, but there was some stuff going on, you know, with the fans and a lot of pole- polemic being created around him. But then he went to Fulham, and he, he I mean he did really well there despite them going down. Yeah, um, he, he is about. He, he will turn thirty three in December, but I, I don't think he's showing his age yet. Uh, one plus one year deal. If that's true, that's a good deal. Um, two and a half million a year. That's not insane. Um, I do remember when we signed him. I think we paid him two point one or two point three or something. I remember people making kind of a fuss about that, but um, I think he's, he proved to be worth that money. And I, I think that would be a, a very good short term fix. 
for Galtz right to replace a, a guy that scored 14 goals this past season and was very important for you guys. But I think Babel can definitely uh, do that job. At the same time, uh, I think we all know what what, what what you're getting with him. He's a good player, not yeah. great, not knows not the league as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Knows the league. Um, and he'll do it. He'll do, he'll do his job, and and he'll he's gonna have one or two games in which he's probably gonna win you uh, points. Uh, definitely, the, definitely. You know what I mean? Like win it's win the points on his own. I'm not gonna, you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, definitely. I think yeah. it's a I think it's a decent signing for sure, especially um, with, with Bista struggling in the winger position right now. Fenerbahce kind of struggling in that position right now. Uh, definitely not a bad signing, but um, I think the big the big question is going to be as well you know like as i said and by diagne what's gonna happen with him um do you do you see the i don't know how you guys i, I know how you feel about it Uzer, but Umut, what do you feel about it? do you think he's you can go into next season with him as your first striker does that feel like uh yeah i really wish to see him going after what he's done uh, both on the pitch and off the pitch i really cannot stand watching him going down every chance he gets inside the box and begging for a penalty every time he does that i'm i'm just done with that you know and also uh similar with emre Moore incident he's too on for instagram you know he his life depends yeah. on instagram and uh, show business and Mimicking Balotelli, I don't know why he does that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's his hero, you know. He yeah, uh, like... yeah, I don't know. It, it <laughs> just, it just like two ages apart. And yeah, I know, but you know, Balotelli is a player that peaked really early in his career, yeah. and when when Diagne re- was young, and he was in Italy, he idolized him because that was his big example. Even though they're like basically the same age. Yeah, I, I have to yeah. uh, trust uh, Fatih Terim's instincts about this one. If he uh, knows how to manage him uh, off the pitch and uh, make him concentrate into the games and not go down inside the box and just finish the position and score the goal, not just beg for a penalty. I, I think he's going to get you the goals in the league, but the question is, I, I think he's going to be a wet noodle in the Champions League. Uh, yeah, 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 definitely. I totally agree. Totally agree. He's, he's uh, as I said, he's he's a crybaby. He's a he's a little bitch. He's too much of an <laughs> insta whore. All of these things, but he gets the goals in the league, and that's fine. But in the Champions League, it just won't cut the mustard. We and I really don't think that Terry wanted Jagne. It's just that we couldn't sign anyone. The board mm. was too incompetent to get one of the top guys on the list, and we ended he was, up. He was a great the signing team. at the time. Let's be honest. I mean, I don't. Think yeah. Well, I mean. On paper, oh, on paper, sure. But the reality was that uh, I mean, something like fifty percent of his goals were tap-ins or penalties, um, uh, and he didn't. He and never scored decent goals, but, but he, he didn't. Yeah. I, I couldn't think of one really impressive goal he scored at Kazan Pasha, and yeah. certainly zero. Well, actually, no. Let's give him some credit. He scored a brilliant header for Galatasaray in the comeback against mm-hmm. uh, Riza. Riza. Yes, exactly. That was a great header. But uh, otherwise, um, nothing in. The Europa League yeah. against Benfica, etc. No, I mean, he just didn't basically didn't cheer up to those games. So I don't think Terry trusts him in Champions League, and I think we're we're definitely doing our best to offload him. And have there been any rumors with, with in regards to a striker as of yet? Because I mean, Mitrolos' loan is that being continued or is that being terminated? Because I believe his loan was for one and a half season initially. Yeah, they, without Moritz, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess I'd much rather have Mitrolos to be honest. I like Mitrolli. <laughs> mm, okay, just because he, he brought wants... us the victory, you know. <laughs> yeah, but he's—I mean, he's, I, I'd rather play Mitrolli than uh, thing, uh, Jagne, honestly. Oh, okay. He contributes but... much more to the to the to the midfield, to the defense. He comes back to to win balls. He's got mm. more. I, he's got a lot more technique, better ball control. I mean, I, I don't know why we're so quick to write off uh, Mitrolli as a club. Yeah, the fans wrote him off pretty quickly as well, despite not really getting many. You know, I mean, he, he scored that goal against Akisar, and I think I think Diagne missed that due to suspension or something, um, because I think he still yeah. had a suspension from from his time at Kasim Pasha because he got a stupid red card in the cup or something for spitting, and oh, then yeah. he basically disappeared onto the bench after that Akisar match, I think, and and. I don't know why he got written off. Maybe some bad sub appearances. I I, I don't really know. Um, not that I think that Mitrolo is the answer for for Galatasaray in the Champions League either. To be honest, but you know, um, who is? It's difficult to find a good striker. 
Uh, yeah. Oh, mosquito attack. Okay. Um, any other, anything else to add to to uh, Galtry's, uh list of rumors, or, or are we done with our uh, little chat chit chat? Burak, anything to add? <laughs> oh, sorry, just coming off mute there. Um, and no, no, nothing, nothing to add here. I, I think it's. Um, I'm just looking forward to having some football back. You know, getting this. Yeah. The UEFA thing done and and dusted, and then seeing what we can actually do, what we can spend, watching watching some friendlies and watching some young players um, in the squad. Um, it's all you know very well talking about you know rumours and hearing about Ben Arthur for the, the millionth time. Um, I'm I'm quite excited about um, the work that Camoli's doing behind the scenes with the youth setup and. Um, bringing people in from places such as Alton Ordon and Crystal Palace to do with data analysis. Um, the two young players that were promoted, or we mentioned earlier, um, Yusuf and Mohamed, I think they were down to the result of um, data analysis work uh, by Kamoli and his team. So let's see how it goes. I mean, um, the two teams that he's worked on previously, Liverpool and Tottenham, um, played the Champions League final this season. Now, I'm not saying that we're <laughs> going to play the Champions League final. Far from it. But you know, with you know, give it a few years, we we might start to see the fruits. Wh- when of... did he last work there, though? Was not that quite a long while ago? Yes, in the yeah, a long time ago. So I think you know, almost like ten, ten to eight years, because he's you know bounced around at Tottenham and then at Arsenal, at Liverpool, and then um, he was in France. For a little bit, so I think he gets a lot of um, un- unnecessary stick from from Turkish fans who say that he doesn't understand football, um, which which I just think is a, a ridiculous statement from someone sitting on their sofa having their chico deck and uludar guzzles. You know, it's like just a classic armchair fan and armchair quarterback. Yeah, he's like or how some, should we some... call it in, in football? Our armchair uh... critic, armchair critic, or <laughs> armchair pirlo. Uh, or just we could just call them idiots. Um, <laughs> if if, I mean, I, if, the, if the, the criticism is justified, I think it's fine to make, to have criticism. Um, I, I don't think we can say that uh, that Komori has has blown us away. But on the other end, I, if you look at the deals that he has made, um, yes, they haven't panned out. But if you look at them purely, basically before this season, if you if you would have said Slima, Slimani, Benzia. Um, who else did he end up signing? I mean, he used his network, and I think a guy like Slamani was a good signing. It just didn't work out. Benzia was on paper a good signing. It just didn't work out. Andre Ayu was a good signing, just did not work out. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, people now are, are labeling these guys as, as shit players, as, as, as average players or whatever, as, as below as subpar players. But when the signing happened, their status was that of a player that should rip up the league. In theory, and you know, sometimes stuff just doesn't work out. That's just the way yeah. it goes. Yeah, it just didn't work out with like three or four players all at once, which is uh, it is not yeah. ideal. Um, but you know, we is uh, I'm you know still still have faith in in him and and faith in Ali Koch. Um, you know, we've had one horrific season, and you know, I think people are too quick to jump on. Like we had the guy who came onto the stage at the, the the board presentation and started ranting about, you know, the people who've brought the club to this situation, Allah Bilan as a And, you know, you, you can understand where he's coming from as an upset fan, but he's speaking absolute nonsense. But um, who is he who, who is he blaming as his Hildurum then or is he just talking about everyone who's working there now? Because you Well if you if you if you break it down, he says the people who have brought the club to this situation yeah, so that should in theory be as a children, but most yes. people are probably blaming Ali Koch already. Well, of course they are because they they're short sighted, yeah. um, which yeah. unfortunately is like every, you know a lot of people because of your your rivals doing really well and us doing the complete opposite and having the financial problems um, very well publicised. But you know that's the that's the the state of play as it is, lads. You know, what, what do you think was going to happen? <laughs> um, so we need to be realistic and think. Okay, you know, it might we might not even be competitive next season, but at least we still be in business. 
Yeah, it's it's uh, Jan Okar put this really well uh, a couple of months ago on the Black Eagles podcast. He said uh, the 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 age of bomba transfers is over, and it it should be. But I don't think you know. I told him then. I think that the Turkish mentality is just not you know. We're gonna keep on trying making those moves. We're gonna keep on trying to wow the fans, even though I think we should be good. Like, uh, you know, the things that you're saying uh, of, of Komali putting in that structure and, and you know working with the youth setup and that's, that's all good. That's great for the future, but obviously you're not going to re- reap the rewards of that straight away. But then when you see the, the players from about your link that are mostly thirty plus year olds. And that still very much kind of harkens back to that Turkish mentality of short-term fix, short-term fix, short-term fix. I think it's fine to have a couple of short-term fixes like a, like a Ryan Babel or Burak Yilmaz. But I think the skeleton of your team needs to be built for the upcoming years. So obviously we don't know yet what's going to happen at Fenerbahce. Our bars, Ali Giar, Ferdi, Cadiolo, are those guys going to get a more profound role next season? Uh, I hope so for Fenerbahce's sake, for those players' sake. Um, well, actually... You know what? Do whatever you want. I don't care. But you know, brilliant. The, uh. the, the question is: Is Esunyanla going to be that type of coach that has the balls to to play those type of players? Like, I, 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 on one hand, I think he said something along the lines of: Look, this is just not the right time to put these young players into the team because we're in such a bad position right now. It's going to affect them negatively. But at the same time, given the season Fenerbahce have had, and once they were kind of safe. I don't know why you wouldn't play a Berke Ezer or or Ferdi Cadiola, but I, I I kind of get where Arsene is coming from, where you may not want to turn throw them into a burning ship, but I don't know. I think things were going a little bit better in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I, I, I would have liked to have seen them play, even yeah. if it was like coming off the the the, the bench for 20-30 minutes, uh, giving the fans a taste of, you know, this is the the future, this is what's to come, etc. But he, he might have thought, you know, let's actually push for that sixth, fifth place and a potential European spot. Um, so and, and he didn't want to risk the the young players when he thought that he could get better results with the, the more senior team. But, you know, the the, the summer is now where we did see what the real intentions are for the, the coming season and we can make a better judgment. And um, yeah. I just popped into my mind, um, Martin Skirtle rumours that he apparently is talking to Basham Shihir. Right. Um, yep, yeah, is um, what I've seen. Um, his contract's up. I think we've offered an extension to him. I'm not sure if it's one or one plus one. Um, but like you say, he's the type of like 30 plus player that we could we could do with having yeah. you know a few of them scattered within the team. Like especially if you he's manage pretty, to keep. He's, he's, he's been stable. He's been solid. I mean. He's not been Lugano. He's not been, uh, uh, you know, Ufalushi or anything like that. But he's been good. He's been stable. Um, and uh, yeah, the type of player you could keep definitely could keep around, but not at the wages he he was earning probably. Uh, no, he was on like a huge. I can't remember what it is, but probably like two, two point five, maybe even higher. higher, higher. But okay. oh, close to five, I believe. But well, not, re- not reported, but like the official number was supposedly three and a half, but uh, I think he got a huge signing bonus and stuff. Um, the full, so, yeah, that, that is it for all that on the room in front. So yeah, we'll let, look to see what happens on yeah. that over the next couple of days. Let's end it there. Uh, well, actually, no, quick question for you guys. If you would get to pick one player for this window, this transfer window, uh, not necessarily a name, but like a role, a position for your club, who would you pick? Burak, starting with you. Striker. Is there? You know, I'd also say striker. <laughs> okay, Umut? Striker. <laughs> okay, uh, well, put myself on the spot now. Uh, <laughs> Khan? Uh, for, for what about me, you, Khan? Yeah, tell uh, us. Tell us now. A, Come a on. Right, a right Come winger. On. A right winger. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah left field right. choice. Yeah, or a left winger. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Well, actually, I could go with a left winger because we could keep Lens, but Quaresma era is uh, is over for me. Uh, even though I, I, you know, great player, I have lots of his shirts, uh, love him, but he's been a dick. Uh, 
But uh, yeah, let's let's end it there. Uh, thank you all for listening to Football Alla Turca. We'll be back next week, hopefully with Samantha Johnson. We're trying to work out scheduling right now, uh, so we'll see. And we'll also definitely have Jano Karan soon to talk a little bit more about the finances of the Turkish clubs. Guys, thank you very much for joining me, and uh, thank us everyone for listening. Follow us on Twitter at Futi Alla Turca. Send us any questions, comments, whatever you want. Uh, how did you like this format? We a little less structured, a little bit more chit chat. Was it okay? Let us know. Guys, peace. Peace. Thank you, everyone. Please like, share, and subscribe. Yeah, yeah. Five star, baby. Yeah, five star rating. Indeed. Give us all. reviews. Give us iTunes reviews and, and, and share with your friends, damn it. Yep, yep. We can take we can take it, we're big boys. <laughs> <laughs>